SeaWorld presents a very carefully packaged image to the public. And it's an image filmmaker Gabriella Cowperthwaite fully bought into. You know, geez, if I had to be an animal in captivity, I'd probably choose to be a killer whale at SeaWorld. They just seem happy. The place seems clean. You're sort of anesthetized when you're there, you know, just like this thumping music. And you look around if hundreds of people are, are smiling. Trainers, like former SeaWorld Orlando trainer Samantha Berg, found themselves buying into that image as well. You know, I think those of us working there bought into the idea that we were having a relationship with the animals and that's the way we were supposed to be presenting it to the public. But the truth is it's a little bit more complicated than that and it's more based on, on a, um, you know, uh, behavioral conditioning than it is necessarily as a real relationship like you would have with another human being. But those perceptions changed on February 24th, 2010 with the death of Don Branshaw. Tragedy at SeaWorld. It happened without warning. A killer whale grabbed a trainer who'd always dreamed of working with orcas and pulled her underwater. The first thing I learned was that Tilikum had killed twice before. This incident terrified me. This animal, he terrified me. It's an employee safety issue, and absolutely you cannot tell that employee safety story without understanding the relationship between the trainers and the whales, and then you have to look at why the whales would, would actually act the way they do in captivity. When you start to see all of the footage from all, you know, the history of SeaWorld's operation, how many incidents there have been of trainers and whales in the water. At this point, Tamari knows that she's in trouble. You hear her just scream out, somebody help me, and the way she screamed it, it was just such a blood curdling, like she knew she was gonna die. Shortly thereafter, when I started understanding what the, what the whales' lives are like there, the trainers are the ones who care about the whales and who feed them and who are there and putting themselves at risk on a daily basis for the whales. And so I sort of see both of them sort of victimized by this corporate system. Blackfish has turned the spotlight on SeaWorld, which was also charged with worker safety violations by OSHA in 2010. SeaWorld turned down an opportunity for an interview, but sent a statement that began by saying, Blackfish is billed as a documentary, but instead of a fair and balanced treatment of a complex subject, the film is inaccurate and misleading and regrettably exploits a tragedy. On the eve of the film's opening, SeaWorld's vice president of communications, Fred Jacobs, emailed select critics in the U.S. disputing various points in the film. And they are nitpicking at a few points or whatever that are sort of factual in the film that we have already refuted. And I think ultimately, I'm, I'm hoping this whole thing sort of engages a debate um, and raises questions in everybody's minds. Honestly, right now, knowing what I know about what those animals are missing because they're not living in the wild, they swim 80 to 100 miles a day in the wild, and they have these incredible social structures and connections with each other, I would actually give that experience up in a heartbeat if I could you know, trade that for those animals not being there in the first place. We in these parks, in these marine parks, can never, ever give them what they need to really thrive, let alone survive, and that it's actually quite dangerous for us to continue trying. SeaWorld's a $2.2 billion company, so I know they're not going anywhere. And they do do some amazing things in terms of rehab. They do great work with manatees and sea turtles. And they have the facilities to do better rehab work, and they also could do a much better job with education. So what I would like to see is that they would phase out their captive breeding program, phase out the animal entertainment side of the business, and they could be an amazing educational facility. But I think that the time for seeing these animals, these majestic animals, <laughs> in captivity for the purpose of entertainment has passed. The film issues no call to action. Instead, it asks us to consider the information presented and make our own decisions about the kind of relationship, if any, we should have with animals in captivity. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.